Hi everyone and welcome to String Symphonia video number three. I am Ms. Porter with the Virginia Tech String Project and today we're going to go ahead and get started um, with some stretches just like we've done in our other videos. Um, so go ahead and think back to those videos or maybe even pull those up if you want to. And you're going to do a couple of those first big muscle group warm-up stretches. Um, the ones where you reach up to the sky and the ones where you reach down to your toes, making sure your neck and your shoulders are very, very relaxed after those stretches. Um, and then I want you to do these cross body arm stretches, just like this. Give it a couple seconds on each arm. And then um, a couple of the other stretches we've done are this one where you put one arm out like this and you stretch back and you stretch down. And you do the same on your other hand. But we're going to add a couple new stretches because I want to keep you guys entertained and give you some more methods for you to warm up on your own so that eventually you have your own kind of vocab bank of different stretches to use um, when you warm up. So a couple more. Um, one is something you've probably done maybe in gym class or something like that, where you put one arm up and bend it to your back, you're gonna take your other arm and stretch just like this. You should feel this part of your arm open up. This is a good stretch for this part, but we don't use this part of our arm. So I want you to think of really relaxing your shoulder and your back, especially near your shoulder blade, because when you stretch like that, you also give your shoulder blade a chance to relax and stretch out a little bit. So then I want you to do it on your other hand, just like this. Don't push it and don't pull too hard with your other hand. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable and make sure you're getting a good stretch as well. Okay, excellent. Um, now, so that's some slightly medium group muscles that we worked out there. Um, another one, and you guys probably have seen me do this one before, but this is one of my favorites, is giving yourself a hug, seeing if you can feel your shoulder blades and kind of almost, you're gonna almost grab them and pull them apart a little bit, but not really. Um, I just wanna feel, see if you can feel those muscles in the middle of your back open up and stretch out a little bit. So do this. This is what I just call the hug. Hug, maybe if your instrument is in front of you, give your instrument a nice warm hug. If your instrument doesn't have a name, I highly recommend it. My name, my cello's name is Olive. Okay, and then you're gonna go back like this. We call this the chicken. I'm gonna go back like this and see if you can have your shoulder blades kind of pull together in your back. So we're kind of doing an opposite stretch here and we're stretching out these muscles as well. Okay, good. And then the last stretch we're gonna do is we're gonna warm up our finger muscles a little bit. Okay, now to get our finger muscles warm, our finger muscles are super important, especially as you all start to audition, think about auditioning for youth orchestra. Um, it's super important the more difficult your pieces are um, the more your fingers are well warmed up um, away from the instrument but also on the instrument and we'll talk about on the instrument a little bit later. Um, so a couple things first. One, I really want you to try this exercise again where you are doing the finger push-ups but it may be helpful if your fingers are already warm for that exercise. So here are a couple other stretches that you can do for your fingers, maybe before you even try your finger push-ups. So one is the stretch that we did earlier, but focusing just on your fingers and not as much on the arm stretch. So you can stretch your fingers backwards just by pushing with your other hand and seeing if you can get a stretch in your palm and in your fingers. Good, and then switch. And your fingers may not go back as far as mine do. I've spent a lot of years stretching like this, so please don't force it if you can't go that far. Another way you can do a good stretch for your fingers is make a fist just like this with kind of flat fingers, or you can try it like this as well 
Um, but I feel like I get a better stretch when I do it like this. So you'll make a fist with one of your hands and then gently with your other hand, pull down on those fingers. And don't, don't push too hard here because you also don't want to hurt your wrist. Um, but we're just trying to stretch our knuckles a little bit in the back of our hand. You may even hear, hear your knuckles crack a little bit. Okay, and then now switch. Okay, now last but not least, this is my favorite stretch. Um, if you clasp your hands together just like this, and then one, you could pull your hands apart and see it, how long you can hold on to your fingers. That's a really good stretch. And then another one is if you push out like this, you'll stretch your fingers back just like in that other stretch, but you'll also open up your palms a lot more. So think about trying to stretch out your palms just like you would stretch out like a piece of fabric over something. Um, Think about that and see if you can really open up your palms. Now, the last thing, we talk a lot about tension in our thumbs, and I wanna give some special attention to our thumbs today, um, especially as we start learning more bow techniques that really, really require you to be relaxed in your thumb. So I just want you to take a couple minutes to move your thumb around like this. See if you can do it super easily. I'm going backwards with my thumb, just making little circles, and then go the other way. Yeah, and then um, just take some time to kind of massage this muscle in here. Um, this is this tends to be a really big tense muscle, especially for people who um, are tense and are athletes, but also like to play the violin or viola or cello or bass. Um, but these muscles get particularly big and sore and tense. So go ahead and massage those muscles out a little bit to warm them up before we start playing. Okay, before we start playing, I wanna do a little bit of a bow check and give you an opportunity to double check that all of the things about your bow hold are on par with where they should be. Um, you guys have done a great job of making your bow hands better um, and we've spent a lot of time kind of redoing them or giving you new ideas on how to fix them and you guys have done fantastic and I could tell by the end of the last time I saw you, which was a couple weeks ago now, um, your all of your bow holds were far better than they were even just last semester. Um, so really keep it up, but I want to talk a little bit more about it. So um, we did those hand warm-ups because um, those are where a lot of our problems are in our bow hand. It's obviously in our fingers and in our thumb, but also all the way up to our shoulder. So now that you're all nice and warmed up, make sure you're nice and relaxed before we go ahead and grab our bows. Um, and I want you to get your bow out and you're gonna set up your bow like you normally would, your bow hold. Um, and for a lot of you, that might look like this. Cellos, that might look like this. Violins, that might look like this. And basses, that might look like this. Um, so I want you to get set up just like you normally would. Now, this is a really good bow hold as far as pictures go. Um, I can tell, you could probably tell as well. My thumb is nice and curved. I've got plenty of space under here. Nothing's too tense. But the only thing is, is my wrist is a little high and so are my fingers. Now something that we haven't talked about a whole lot in string playing is kind of sinking our fingers more into the bow. And for cellos that might look a little more like this, keeping that nice space in your hand, keeping your palm soft as well as your thumb, keeping it nice and soft and relaxed. Um, for violins and violas, that'll look a little more like this. And this is especially where the finger push-ups may come in handy is because this action when you sink into your bow like that is your knuckles moving closer to the bow now what this does is this gives us a little bit more control over the bow what is control over the bow i can already do down and up bows what else do i need to do 
Well, control over the bow can get you to play short notes shorter, long notes longer, and it can get you to play, you could play one whole slur and have forte notes here, piano notes here and here. You could do a lot more things the more control you have over your bow. So again, now that you've got your bow and your bow hold set up, I, all I want you to try to do is drop your knuckles a little bit and drop your wrist. See if, if you can hold your hand out just like I'm doing now and see if you can get a straight line there. And that's kind of what we want. Even when we're playing the violin, we want a straighter wrist here. Um, and even if it's a little bent, that's okay. But the goal is to get our fingers to sink down a little bit more. Cellos, I want to see a straight bow arm where your fingers aren't too high like this. And your wrist isn't too high either. This is especially important, important on cellos. We want to have a nice fluid wrist that isn't stuck in this position or in this position either. And that's a lot of where a bad bow hold like this comes from is our wrist is not strong enough. So go ahead and practice sinking into the bow a little more, hugging it a little more with your fingers while still leaving space in here and a soft thumb and soft fingers.